I've heard people say that God made bass so everybody could catch a fish, and God made crappie to separate the men from the boys. Well, I'm here to prove that wrong. For Fish Vermont, here's how to catch a crappie in five seconds. My name is Zachary McNaughton, and I am not a professional angler. I've been fishing for over 20 years, and the one thing that these years have taught me most is that I have a lot to learn. So let's meet some of Vermont's true master anglers, and together we'll discover some fishing techniques and explore the many species that this great state has to offer. All you have to do to catch a crappie, take a small lure, Check it in the lake, and you need five seconds. So you just reel and count down five, four. Oh, there we go. I guess sometimes you only need two seconds. So reel in your fish. No, you said four seconds. Yeah, but I started at five. You smack me in the And that is how you catch a crappie in five seconds. Chuck it in the water and count down from five while you slowly reel. Five, four. Three, two, one. And set the hook on your fish. Dang it. Oh yeah, sure. Make it eight seconds, why don't you? But this isn't a video about how to catch a crappie in eight seconds. This is how to catch a crappie in five seconds. So let's try that again. Here's how to catch a crappie in five seconds. Take a small lure. Chuck it anywhere. Yeah, I was right. Cut it in five seconds. <laughs> and count down from five. Five, four, three. Oh, got it. In a few seconds. Oh. I... Five seconds for fish Vermont. All you do, take a small lure like this, chuck it in the water, or smash it into the side of your boat. <laughs> <laughs> I caught a crappie. Show it up to the camera. Sorry, it's flinging me on my. Boom! Here's how. Move closer to me. Alright, take it off. Here's how to catch a crappie. Take a small lure, chuck it in the water, hey, count down from five. Five, four, three, two, one. Set the hook, and now you have a crappie. Ah, and here's how to catch a crappie in five seconds. Just take a small lure, doesn't matter where you cast it, I'll just chuck it over my shoulder, and now we're just gonna count down five, five, four, five three, four, three, two, three, two one. one, set the hook, and five, then just four, reel in your crappie. Three, two, one, no. Boom, that's how you catch a crappie. Five. Small lure, chuck it over your shoulder, and count down from five. Five, four, three, two, oops, you got hit on two. One, set the hook, and reel in your crappie. Sorry. Oh, I lost it. And here's how to catch a crappie in five seconds. Take a small lure, Almost cut it. chuck it over your shoulder, and count down from five. Five, four, three, two, oh, set the hook, and reel in your crappie. He's going for my lure. And that's how you catch a crappie in five seconds. Got it. Take a small lure, chuck it in the lake, Count down from five. Five. five four, three, two, four. Four. Yeah. three. There we go. Five. Four. Three. Two. Five. Five. Quick tutorial for Fish Vermont on how to catch a crappie in five seconds. We're in two feet of water with some weeds. Take a small lure, hook it out there. Count down from five while you slowly reel. One, five, four, three, two, one, and set the hook. <laughs> Just kidding. Fish Vermont. What's really happening here is this time of year, the crappie like to move up from their deep holes into shallow weed flats to feed just before dark. We got lucky and found one of the schools that was moving around and just stayed with it. 
I've experienced this behavior on several different bodies of water around the state. So once you find them, it's predictable and you can repeat this pattern over and over again. But now let's talk about another species that can be caught with the same lures and rods that comes all the way up from the ocean to visit us at the end of May and early June. In a lot of the East Coast rivers there are there had been shad fests and there are massive shad runs of um, these fish up the river. These are the fish that you know you could walk on the back of them. I mean they're you know in a fully healthy river you would be able to see them when they come running. So even though our numbers are higher and getting better, um, they're nowhere near kind of our historic um, highs. The shad have a pretty interesting life cycle. They might spawn for two years or three years, right? So in, in this case, you need to get them up, to the, up in the river to find appropriate spawning ground, and then they're gonna leave again. And so you gotta get them out safely, and that may have to happen, you know, two or three times, depending. As they're coming up the river, you know, there's a certain amount of fat store, and so, well, some of the studies that are looking at shad are actually trying to, to figure out how many times they've spawned. Um, because if they're having to spend a lot of energy trying to navigate their way up, they're burning that spawning energy before they get to the place where they want to spawn. So trying to reduce the amount of time it takes them to get through the fish passage is really important in the reproductive you know, success of the species. We get sort of weekly updates of the fish counts of all the passages coming up the river. And so when you start to count the numbers, this is what we're seeing now is that, you know, we get a really good passage through Holyoke. When the fish get to Turner's, the passage is not uh, functioning that well. But what gets passed through Turner's, almost all of them are getting passed through Vernon. So, um, you know, there's a big focus right now on trying to increase the efficiency of how the fish move the, through the Turner's Falls area. The best place to target American shad during their spring run is at the two southernmost dams in Vermont, the Vernon Dam and the Bellows Falls Dam. These dams act as barriers that slow down the fish and will cause them to congregate in larger groups. The fish will tend to hug tight to shore just under the surface and they'll follow the contours of any outcropping rocks or other structures as they swim up and circle back downstream in a steady loop. These fish are extremely skittish and if you'd like to have success angling for them, it's very important that you try to blend in with the rocks and not make a lot of sudden movements. I target them with a light action 7 foot rod and basically any small lure that you would use for ice fishing for panfish. The technique is actually quite simple. You really don't want to overdo anything. So what I do is I take just a small little ice fishing jig and I'll flip it out into the current and try to find a nice current seam where it'll just dangle along one of the areas where these fish turn to go around some sort of rock or other underwater obstruction. You'll find that you'll get most bites with the fish that are swimming upstream as they're working hard and moving a lot slower. The fish swimming downstream tend to be moving quite quickly with the current at their backs, but they will sometimes turn and hit a jig. Oh, I just had one swing it. There we go. Got him. On one that was coming downstream. Oh, no kidding. These fish have extremely thin mouths, similar to a crappie, so you need to have your drag set properly in order to fight them in this type of current. If you decide to go out and try to target shad during the spring run, please keep in mind that these are a protected fish species and cannot be kept. But also beyond not keeping them, they're extremely tired from their long journey from the ocean. So it's important to get them back into the water with as minimal stress as possible as quickly as possible. Uh, hey, let me guess, 19, 18 and a half. One of the other key elements to being successful fishing for American shad is a good pair of polarized sunglasses. That one just get a long circle to come look at me. This will allow you to see past the reflections in the water and really interact with the fish better. Sometimes they only give you a split second to set the hook. Oh, you got one? Yeah. I yanked it out away from it, and it came right back. Sweet. It's also important to manage your expectations when targeting this fish. They're not necessarily a fish that you can just roll up on the river and expect to catch a bunch of. My approach is to take several short trips at the beginning or end of the day, before or after work. I also want to point out just a little safety concern that this type of fishing 
You're up close on loose rocks to an extremely fast-moving river. It may not really sh show justice in this video just how quickly this river can be moving, but the water is still cold, and it's actually kind of a precarious location uh, at both sites where you can access these fish. So please be smart, be safe. You can monitor the river flow data on the USGS website by typing in Connecticut River Flow Rate. Anything over 4,000 is really, really increasing your risk factor. It would be awesome to see the shad populations return to some of their historic levels, but the reality is that they just struggle to pass these dams that we've built in the rivers, and uh, not very many make it up to Vermont anymore. After about eight or nine sessions, I finally caught my master angler for this year. The shad are only with us for a couple weeks and then they make their voyage back to the ocean to be seen again next year. If you witness anyone illegally taking American shad in Vermont, please call the game theft hotline so that the few bad apples don't spoil this unique fishing opportunity for the rest of us. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.